Hello, one today is Thursday, April 27th, 2023, and this is the week in charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and girls for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. So we talk about it. Obviously, current market conditions, I have a lot to say about that. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks. If you don't mind, hang out until we get to the live charts before you start asking about those, just so I don't get the get it confused with other questions. That's for your benefit. And once we do get to the charts, ask about one stock or crypto at a time and then hit return. We'll cover crypto first, and then we'll go to stocks. One thing I wanted to talk about today is that markets are markets. And I want to talk about using the core methodology, just pullbacks and simple money management in crypto. And I have uh, two or three examples for you tonight with that. I got a question on money management a few weeks ago. And by the way, if you did ask a question uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went to do a show and I had technical difficulties and wasn't, wasn't able to do the show. So uh, if some of your questions don't get asked, I will be covering them in the upcoming webinars. Uh, but feel free to ask again in Facebook and I'll see what we can get to. Anyway, uh, what are you guys was asking about money management? That sounds good on paper, but I think there's going to be some options. Zero DT some options, some uh, issues. Zero DTE options, too good to be true, probably. <laughs> but we'll jump right into that in just one second. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about CFM system updates since we had a, a signal not that long ago. And it's a low level signal. I want to kind of flesh that out a little bit. I also want to take a look at some of the longer term results and stuff like that. There's a disclaimer screen. If you've been trading for more than a day, as you know, you can lose money trading. I'll have to sum it up. All predictions or about the future, you know, a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Okay, let's talk about using the core methodology in crypto. So here's INJ. You, you know what these guys do? I have no idea. <laughs> like a true technician. You can see that it, it did break away from the exponential moving average. And years ago, I published a system or a, a setup called... Um, accelerating momentum strategy and as i'm looking at this this is actually an accelerating momentum strategy too because notice that it kind of took off and then it accelerated higher and then it corrected nice and deep if you're following landry light this would be a landry light pullback a 30 ema landry light pullback or kiss my goodbye kiss with just moving average is what i used to call them and you could see that the landry light goes to zero when you come back to touch that moving average. Not that I'm a, a huge fan of mechanical trading, but years ago I did a lot of mechanical trading and a lot of mechanical testing, and that's what made me a discretionary trader. But if you're newer to trading, find something that is kind of easy to recognize like this, find something that's quantifiable, and then make sure you're picking the best of the best setups, because even though a setup might fit this pattern, it could actually be losing momentum before it comes down to kiss moving average. Anyway, this was a futures position. So with futures, because of leverage and everything, I just looked to get 10% for my initial profit target out of the trade. So 10% would be right there. And you can see that's the actual trade. So I'm kind of doing nickel and dime stuff with this, with the crypto. And you can see that came in about a thousand is what I've put up and that actually I think I only put up um, a couple hundred bucks because of leverage and then I'm flipping out at 10% okay so that's $50 I'd have $100 open profits and I'm taking half of those and just 50 bucks is is going in but you can see it happened pretty quick over one day period which is better than the poke in the eye if you do that long enough and make enough round trips and eventually catch a big winner then you'll do quite well so here's a case where the pullback didn't come all the way back to the 30 EMA, but I like the setup and you can see entry was there, initial profit target was 10% higher. And here's the actual order. So a little bit over a thousand dollars. And I think I had to put up like 200 bucks for this and then flipped out half for a little bit less than 50 bucks in this particular case. But now I'm free rolling on the remainder. If it comes back down and stops me out, then I get out of the scratch. If it keeps on keeping on, then I have the potential for a longer term home run. And it all started with just a couple hundred bucks. 
Now, here's the open trades. They were a little bit better than this when I checked earlier. I hope I'm not jinxing them. But you can see these are the, the profits that I took on those two positions. So just $50 on the initial profit targets. And this one, like I said, happened pretty quick within like a day. And this one might have took, taken a little bit longer, but we got there finally. And these are the, the unrealized profits. And these percentage-wise numbers are huge. And that's based on what was, was put up or what is uh, needed to maintain the position due to leverage. So that's the open, that's the unrealized profit. And there's the unrealized profit there. On the right is your realized profits. My goal with all this stuff is to get a bunch of free positions going, so to speak, the free rolling, which I know we haven't done in a while in the equities. And believe me, I'm working on that. And we'll get to some of that stuff in, in, a, in a little while. We'll get to the live charts. But that's the secret to trading is being able to establish some free positions, so to speak, and then ride them out. And here's another example. And you can see this one turned out to be a little bit longer term in the trade. Now this order was placed, you can see right after I placed the trade. It didn't hit right after I placed the trade. That'd be nice if it did. But you can see got in, where did I get in? Oh, or 0 0.02222, uh, sounds like two Tortino's pizzas, uh, right around, two cents and then you're flipping it out at in this case 20 percent higher 0.267 so i'm looking for 200 dollars on a cash type of market and you can see it didn't have a, a really super deep pullback but i like the way it looked because it had begun to really accelerate higher and it had a little bit of a correction now if you're waiting for it to come down to the 30 that never happened so the reason i show you the 30 ema pattern is again if you're newer to trading or if you prefer something a little bit more quantifiable and slightly mechanical then by all means trade a pattern like that until you become successful and then start trading some other patterns that might not be as defined such as just a generic pullback like this anyway entry was here initial profit target was 20 percent higher it did take a little while to get there as you can see but it did so hopefully i know I just said hope is this going to be the next big thing i don't know but you positioned yourself, and when we get back into money management in a few minutes, when we get to the question of money management, I'll flesh that out a little bit more, talking about those free rolls. Okay, zero DTE options. Too good to be true? Oh, any questions uh, on crypto before we go any further? I know there were some questions from a couple of weeks ago, and I'll, I'll look through that thread on Facebook and see what else uh, you guys want to talk about. In upcoming shows, it's take me a couple of weeks to catch up on everything. But these zero DTE options, pretty interesting. Zero DTE stands for zero days till expiration. Every day in certain ETFs and the E minis, they have options that expire every day. Now, now the way to wrap the head your head around that is every option eventually becomes a zero DTE option. Okay. So let's say you've got weekly options. So tomorrow, Sox S, Sox L, LabD, LabU, Gush, Drip, those will all become zero DTE options as of tomorrow because it's they're going to expire tomorrow, the weekly options, that is. So that's one way to wrap your head around it. And I remember years ago, now this was in a raging bull market. I remember saying, I wish every day was option expiration. Well, my dream has finally come true, but it's only in these selected markets such as QQQ, XSP, which I'll talk a lot about in a minute, and the E-minis. Now, are they too good to be true? And I was trying to find, uh, I don't know if red herring is the phrase, but if you guys have a phrase for this or if you're watching on YouTube, let me know. I need to find a phrase for too good to be true. Scamouflage is, is what... Uh, what I came up with because they, they could be a bit of a, seem like a little uh, hokey and a, a bit of a scam, I guess. But initially, they really do seem too good to be true. Now, and now I'm going to show the post in a minute, but one of you guys uh, said something that I have observed too. And I've only been noodling with these. Now, keep in mind, I've been noodling with zero DTE options before they existed for many years on expiration, but I'm only started, I've only started to noodle with these zero DTE options on the indexes, indices 
in more recent times. In fact, I've only had about two or three days of actual trading of them. Now, they do appear pretty expensive in the morning and cheap in the afternoon. And it's kind of trial by fire going after these indices like I've been doing. But yeah, I did notice yesterday they were crazy expensive in the morning and stuff that I paid a lot of money for just evaporated really quick. But they do get cheap in the afternoon, and therein lies a potential advantage. My initial thought with these was that I was only going to trade them like the last 15 minutes of the day. But I have found myself watching them more and more and more and more, and I'm getting pretty active in trading them, which, which might be a bad thing. As usual, I get gung-ho, and I probably need to back off a little bit. But I'm learning a ton in the process. Now, there's crazy leverage possible with these things. And I think it was yesterday I took an s g position of 40 XSP options. I was going to go for 100, but it was an s g trade, and the commissions were pretty high on that. So that's the commissions is something that's kind of hidden in this. It, and I tend to ignore commissions until they bite me in the butt. But just make sure you're occasionally hitting a bit of a home run to make sure you're covering all that, what they call frictional costs. But anyway, I bought 40 XSP options at one cent. So they were $1 each. So that was 40 bucks plus commissions. I think it ended up being about 60 bucks or 66 bucks, whatever it was. But I had the equivalent of a 4,000 share position. And I know it's fuzzy math because it was out of the money. So technically it wasn't. But had it gone in the money, okay, that $40 investment, or I think it was, like I said, $66 with commissions would be worth $4,000. Now, I know it's a bit of a pipe dream, and I'm going to talk a little bit about these dangerous OTM out-of-the-money options in just one second. But for me, it's pretty amazing that in this particular case, 40 bucks plus commission, so 66 bucks, I guess, you can control $1.6 million worth of XSP. If you were to buy the spiders, which is... I guess it would be the equivalent of XSP or something very similar. You'd have to come up with $1.6 million in margin to buy 4,000 shares, but you could buy one of these so called like tiny options for much, much, much less. So I think the asymmetrical potential reward is worth it, but I wouldn't rush out and buy a bunch of these lottery tickets unless you were doing really really well and let's say you're rolling out and rolling out and rolling out on your options and then you decide just for SGs to piss away a little bit of money or fritter away a little bit of money i should say and, and buy like a crazy position in these today for instance i had a position on that was doing well i didn't want to completely lose my position but i didn't want to let those profits evaporate and that's something i'm trying to wrap my head around and work on is is the management of positions and i'm going to show you a few things in one second but just for S and G's, and again, I'm just experimenting with this stuff, but I had a couple of options on and uh, I took my profits, but I was able to get some options just a little bit out of the money, like another point out the money on the XSP. And so I just frittered away a little bit of money and I bought 10 contracts and they never did go into money, but they tripled or quadrupled in value. And then once they were up fairly nicely, I started peeling some off enough to get my original investment out. And then once again, I'm free rolling. And that's a that's a great thing to do. And I'll explain that in a little more detail in just one second. Do not short. I spent many years in a as part of a hedge fund or an advisor to a hedge fund, chief technical now, analyst or whatever they want to call me. Um, and his favorite saying was Gamma get you. And he was a net seller, so that was kind of a, a dangerous thing. And gamma, without getting too far into the Greeks to show you how little I know, but it's a rate of change of delta. So that option that I just talked about, about 10 of them out the money, like one point out the money, well, it probably had a delta, meaning that for every point the underlying goes up, it might only go up like a, a quarter of a point, if that much, okay? So... The problem is if you have a short dated option that's close to the money, when it goes into the money, gamma, which is the rate of change of delta, can go from like 10 to 100 really quick. Something when a delta of 100 to 100 trades like 100 shares of the underlying stock. 
So don't don't short these things. I've I've been kind of poking around quite a bit on the net just to see what's out there and watching a few videos. And and as soon as these people tell me, or as soon as these people say they're shorting these short dated options, I immediately turn it off because that that's an absolute recipe for disaster. It's like picking up a nickel in front of a bulldozer, I guess is the is the saying. The other thing I'm seeing a lot of is people talking about spreads and butterflies and all this complexity. If you're an engineer type and you like noodling with all this stuff, then then knock yourself out. I'm a position trader. I want to get in and I want to ride them out and hopefully get at least a 2x on the options and peel off half and then ride that free position and maybe even take some profits and do some SG rollouts where maybe a 10 to 1 rollout or something and have the potential to hit really, really big, but at the least be able to pull a little money out of the market in the process. And by the way, I don't think you could trade them every day. You're going to have to probably, and this is kind of a presentation uh, part two or part three or part four or part 10, but you're going to probably have to have some kind of setup in mind, maybe a bigger picture pattern. Like today, we were kind of rallying out of pullback, so that worked out pretty good. Now, one thing you might be able to do is, let's say you're trading E-minis. If you're trading E-minis, every point is $50. And so in reality, let's let's say you're trading 30 points times 50. Okay, so let's say you put on two contracts and you've got to give them a lot of room before you know it you're going to have to give it three thousand dollars worth of room for two contracts with 30 points so 30 points would be fifteen hundred dollars so there might be a way to get into a futures position for like five points okay so maybe maybe much 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 less a risk and then that kind of becomes your stop so if you're looking at something that's out of the money and especially earlier in the day, you might be able to get it fairly cheaply. Or if you prefer to have your, your delta higher, meaning that you want to capture that whole move, okay, then you can go in the money a little bit. And it's no different than my discussions on puts as a substitution for stock. So, if, so go in and watch some of those presentations. The problem with options is if you know options, you're probably rolling your eyes <laughs> thinking like, I know all this, Dave, or you got, you're getting that wrong. And if you don't know options, you're probably rolling your eyes like, what is he talking about? So that's the problem with options. But you can possibly get into them earlier in the day because, like I said earlier, they're, they're expensive. They seem to be overly expensive during the morning and then cheap in the afternoon. Now, I'm not using option pricing models. Uh, I really don't. I mean, everybody in Barla has the same model, so you're not seeing anything that nobody else is seeing. I think the advantage you could have would be maybe a little bit on the timing side and get your timing right. And in this case, we're just looking for that position to move in our favor. And as I'll flesh out in, in, in a minute, sometimes you can get a move in your favor and not even have it go into money. And in fact, I think it just said that earlier with those options. But then the management of them becomes something else to deal with. So, and, and that's going to, I'm going to flesh that out over time as I figure it out myself. But the, for instance, in a case where let's say you've got, you bought some S and G options, you, you, you were long a couple and then you traded out of them. And then let's say you bought like 10 out of the money. Well, those things start getting close to the money. All of a sudden you've doubled your money on those. Do you allow that? Let's say you put up a hundred bucks on those. You already made like four or 500 of the other ones. Do you allow that option to go back to zero? Or do you scale out and, and have the position pay for itself? Now, what I did today was, I think I bought them at seven cents. They were about to point out the money later in the day. And when they got to like 20 cents, I was able to flip out like three of them to pay for my position and then let everything else ride. And it ended up expiring worthless. But at least, what's the old saying? I had a chip in the chair. I think that's the saying. Now, if you... One thing that I've noticed in markets, and it didn't happen today, unfortunately, and I think I was kind of counting on it to happen because I positioned myself for a big move. But one pattern that I've been watching 
for a couple of years now and paying attention to is like a race is what I call a race to the finish or RTF. And if you ever notice late in the day, sometimes Lab U or Lab D or whatever the case may be, Gush is one that does it quite a bit. And the S&P futures, a lot of times will, in the last, it usually happens within the last 10 minutes, but start watching around 15 minutes till uh, the close. There's a possibility for this, this race to the finish type of pattern to happen where the market just shoots straight up into the close, maybe it's short covering, or it just implodes right at the close. Maybe it's it's profit taken or whatever you want to call it, or just outright selling. And one thing I found out was I think they shut you off about 15 minutes before the close with the S and P E minis. So you would have to you would have to buy before those last 15 minutes, which with this pattern, you don't know if it's gonna happen or not when you're 15 minutes out. Maybe the market will tip its hand. 15 minutes out, but maybe not. But what I discovered was the XSP, which is which is kind of like spiders. It's almost like equivalent to spiders. I think it's one tenth of the S&P 500. But with the XSP, which is like 410, S&P is like 4100. Those are cash settled, settled. And just to, I'm hoping it worked out because I did an experiment mostly to see if it works so I could talk about it. And I haven't checked lately because when i checked earlier it wasn't there yet but they're cash settled so that means that if you're if you have one point profit at the end of the day which is 100 bucks let's say let's say you've got a 400 call and the xsp closed at 401 it's my understanding that 401 minus 400 they'll put a hundred dollars in your account if the option was was you paid, let's say you paid a dollar for it and it's a 400 option and the market closes at 399, then that premium you paid goes away. So there is a possibility for late day leverage and just for S and G's to see if it would work, I bought some options. Let's see if we can see it, might have a password. Oh, here it is. Yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing how it whether it settled out or not. Maybe it did. Yeah, I'll have to uh, look at it tomorrow, I guess. But just to see if it would work, I bought an option late in the day. You can't get exercise on these options. So if you're buying futures, let's say you're buying e mini options, zero DTE e mini options. And let's say those futures go five points in the money and you've got five contracts on they're going to exercise that because it's in the money and then you're going to have to come up with that margin which is a lot of margin and also you really don't want to be taking on those contracts so with something like the e-minis you got to make sure you're out by the close uh, i think qqq would be the same way because qqq is a deliverable they could put 100 shares of qqq in your account and where where are the queues 400 and something so forty thousand dollars so every contract is my math on that correct let's see 100 times four i forget where they are but 410 or 400 yeah forty thousand dollars round numbers you'd have to have that margin in your account and i'm not sure how it works if you don't but anyway so with the XSP, it's not a problem. So use whatever instrument you like, but late in day, make sure you're closing down deliverable options. And then also, if you are gonna do S and G type of trading going into the close, maybe use XSP to where it's cash settled. And again, I've did some experiments, so I'm gonna see how, how it works out and I'll report back to you. Now, one thing, I found like when I'm trading e minis, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna take a stab and give it five points. And before you know it, just by the time I get my orders in or whatever, it's already against me five points. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute. Well, let me give it a little bit more run. Before you know it, I end up risking a lot more than I thought I would. And maybe I might be doing like a race to the finish type of pattern in e minis. And then I'm scratching out by the end of the day. It's like, I need to exit that day trade. But I'm like, ah, let me just leave it on and see what happens. Before you know it, I end up losing a lot of money overnight. 
unless of course it's it's in a route in one direction and then of course i get my trailing stop working so i find that trading e-minis outright is you either have to give them a, a a shit ton of rum to ride out the noise or you're going to have to really really manage it and the noise alone will likely take you out so really hard to go in and something like e-minis and just risk like five points and then have it go from there every now and then i've hit it right and done that and i call it like the 5 10 15 20 25 30. so i'll go in for five points and it's going i'm sorry five points risk if it goes up five points then i'll open up my risk to 10. I'll keep opening that risk up until I get to like 20 or 30 points so I can ride the trend all day long. That doesn't happen that often, and that's kind of a dangerous thing to do. But I think if I wanted to position in the E-minis, maybe I can risk, let's say, 10 points on an option that's fairly close to the money as opposed to having the risk 30 points like I normally would per contract. And that's in order to ride out a trend longer term. I mean, sometimes when I say longer term, I mean intraday. But sometimes you can get away with 20 points, but it's going to take a lot of points to trade the S&Ps. And with, with the options, you can take your loss up front. Now, let's say the market reverses, your options are immediately worthless. Well, just sit on them. And who knows, by the end of the day, you might get lucky. I know that doesn't sound like a good strategy, but you might get lucky. And if you got that 2X order in there, you might have the mother of all reversals. And then you might get paid out of your position where you can get a free position working. Now, I mean, that would be like an ideal world where you got a free position on both sides. Now, by the way, I am I am kind of noodling a little bit with strangles, and I said I wasn't going to make it complex, but most of my focus is on directional plays. But then every now and then it seems like a, a strangle might be, especially as a, as a day gets, gets later in a day, a strangle is where you have a call at one level and a put at a lower level. And if you can get that maybe narrow enough and you get that late day breakout, that could work out nicely. But that's not going to be my bread and butter strategy with this, at least not initially. And, you know, the only problem with something like a strangle is now, do you want to go up? Do you want to go down? It, it gets complicated really quick. Now, here's some issues. Even though you don't lose much money, money-wise, you still lose 100% of your money on a cheap option that expires out of the money. You still lose 100% of your money. So I've done some s and trading with these cheap out the money options like I did today, bought them at seven cents, flipped out some at 20 something cents and then kept the line share and then they expired worthless. Well, it was a free ride and it was an s and position. So I was fine with that. But if your out of the money option expires worthless, you're still losing 100% of your money. So that's something to think about. And by the way, if you piss away $100 a day, that's $25,000 a year. So don't think, oh, it's only 100 bucks. Well, 100 bucks here, 100 bucks there, after a while begins to add up. Now, like I said a minute ago, something like the E-minis, let's say you bought a bunch pretty close to the close. I know you can't get that close to the close, but pretty close to the close. And E-minis didn't do a whole lot in the last two minutes of the day. They just skyrocket. And all of a sudden, good problem to have, but all of a sudden your options or in the money and the market closes and then you're gonna get exercise on your options. Well, you're gonna need a, a shit ton of margin to take on that those E-minis. And I'm not sure what happens if you, if somebody knows what happens, make a comment, leave, leave a comment below. I don't know if you get your account reg teed or something like that. You don't wanna be reg teed. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Now it's nearly impossible at least what I found so far. Now I'm not an options guru. I'm just a position trader who occasionally dabbles in a little options. But from what I've seen, if you're buying out of the money options, these things like I, I picked up some for like, I don't know, I think like some with like 34 cents and it's like you bat your eyes and then they're at seven cents. It just seems like it happens so damn quick. So if you're buying out of the money options, I don't see where it's possible to have any money management whatsoever on those things. You just have to say, okay, this is a bit of an S and G type of trade. It's close enough to the money to where I could I could get paid should the market take off, but it's far enough away to where I'm not putting up a lot of money. And if it, and it's a little fuzzy math, and this is what the fuzzy math comes in, but if I was trading that outright, I'd have to put up 
I'd have to be willing to lose, let's say, fifteen hundred dollars. But maybe I could trade this option, and I'm only out a hundred bucks. Okay, so that's a a different way of kind of looking at it. Now, if you if you were newer to options, maybe what you do is you go in the money, and then as you get better and better and better, go at the money and then out of the money. So in the money option could be a substitution for your position. Just decide on how much fluff, extrinsic value, in other words, you're willing to pay on those. Now, there's, uh, there's lots of potential hands-on, too. You do, you do sort of have to pay attention. Uh, my limit orders have been a bit of a godsend with this to where I don't have to watch a screen. But if your limit orders get hit to flip out half of your options at, at 2x, then you're going to have to decide on whether or not you're going to roll out and how you're going to manage that position. So there's lots of potential for hands-on. Um, the temptations are really there to be a contrarian. At least I've been tempted so far. Because let's say the market takes off, starts going straight up. Well, the puts that are down here, where the market was trading just 30 minutes ago, whatever, start getting really, 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 really cheap. And you're kind of like, eh, maybe I can play both ends and get some middle, put some puts on, we we'll get a late day reversal those puts will pay off. So there are some temptations there. One thing I would encourage you to do is whatever you're buying something out of the money, always immediately put in that 2X order to sell half. In other words, let's say you buy an option at 10 cents, immediately put an order to sell it at 20 cents for half. Now, if you are slightly out of the money, the option is 100% premium, okay? The option is not worth anything at expiration. When you're trying to wrap your head around options, always think in terms of at expiration. So we've got, let's say, XSP at 400, and you bought a call at 400, at 401 at expiration, especially since it's cash settled, 401 minus 400 equals one point. Each option's 100 shares, so you get $100. A 400 call at expiration, and the underlying is at 399, you get absolutely nothing. A put at 399, a 400 put at 399, 400 minus 399 is one, you would make one point on that. So always think in terms of expiration and then work your way backwards, so to speak. Now, one thing that I've noticed is the slightly, and, and what are you guys, and I see Paul chiming in with a question, so he might know more about options than I do, but one of the things I notice is, there's probably a word for this, I don't know if it's theta, but it's something, <laughs> there's probably a Greek for it is what I'm trying to say. The problem is, it's like, one thing I notice is that you're slightly out of the money on options, let's say you're one point out on XSP, it's 100% premium because it's not worth anything. Again, think in terms of at expiration. So you're at 399 and the option is at 400. Okay. And you buy that option at 400 for one point. I find that once that option starts going into, into the money, the, the premium comes off quickly. It seems like it comes off quicker than it would normally in a normal stock. And, and so I'm not sure exactly why that is. So, for instance, let's say that you buy a 401 option and you pay a dollar for it when when the market's at 400, okay? So you paid 100% fluff. Now, when this stock begins to rally or index or whatever it is, and let's say it rallies to 401, that option will start, the, the fluff will start coming down in value. So, in this case, let me re, let me rewind that. So let's say you bought a 400 option, okay, for one dollar, and the market rallies to 401. So that option has one dollar intrinsic, but your extrinsic value begins to come off really, really fast. So you'll find that these don't go up on a one-to-one -one basis until you start getting further into the money. So what I'm trying to say is, your premium that you paid goes away, even though the option is getting closer to the money. Now, I guess it, ha it depends on when it happens earlier in the day, because many times the option will never get to your strike, but if, if they're cheap when you bought them, they have the potential to double. 
Now, Paul says, do you watch IV, which is implied volatility, when you make the trade? Actually, I do not. I just kind of go off feel. I, I, I notice the IV numbers, okay? So let me talk about both sides of my mouth. I, I notice the IV numbers, but I don't really obsess over them too much. If, if something looks really, really crazy, maybe maybe I might double think or think twice. But for the most part, I really don't pay a lot of attention to the IV. And I'm not sure that the IV, and uh, if Larry McMillan would see this, he'd probably shake his head, I'm sure. But I'm not sure that the, the IV is tremendously important with these zero DTEs, because like the IVs, I was kind of shocked at how low the IVs were on the E-mini futures. They, they, they seem like crazy low, especially toward the end of the day. So the answer is no. Do you have an option model or something that you're following when you're looking at that, Paul? Now here's some positives, but again, they're a, I'm trying to find the right word, a white elephant, a red herring, there's something, right? Scamouflage, there's something. There is a potential to hedge on a route day. Let's say the market starts coming unglued. Well, you could put on some, some slightly out of the money puts and maybe make a little money on those indices while they're imploding and hang on to your stocks and hopefully they don't hit your your stop and then maybe tomorrow the market reverses and all of a sudden you're back to back in black on your stocks now i think there's a potential but anytime you hear me use the word hedge or anyone else for that matter just just be careful and and take it with a grain of salt because hedging is expensive in and of itself and it's a constant drain on your account when you're hedging and then obviously if the hedge works then something else isn't working but i do think if you have a route day, it's possible. A route day just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. Or in a lot of cases, a route day would be like down, 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 just keeps going down. So Paul said, I was always told sell options when IV is high, buy options when it's low, but the one day window is probably a different model. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm doing if you must define what I'm doing, I'm I'm doing gamma plays right now. Now, I have experimented a little bit. I've only been doing a few days now, but I've traded options before, obviously. I have been experimenting a little bit with deeper in the money when I want the delta. When I want when I want to be long, I want to be short and I don't know how far the market's going to go and I really want a position, then I will go in the money on the options. Um, I think what options, it's like, it's, um, I think it's like a misnomer, like, oh, you want to sell the high IV. Well, maybe there's a reason why that IV is high. Okay. Maybe somebody knows something that you don't and they, they've jacked those prices of the options up. I would, I would never sell, never say never, but I would never, ever sell. In fact, I could, I could probably put my hand to God and say, I never will. I don't see myself ever selling these things naked. I don't sell any options naked. I've had some, you know, two drink minimum on those stories, but I've had some really bad experiences there, kind of uh, experiences that I think about every day of my life. So I don't sell anything naked. I I buy, I'm long options. And I know people make an argument, well, Dave, 90% of options expire worthless. Why not sell them? Well, it's that 10% that'll get you. You know, you could do really good, and then blow up. It's a, it's a great way to have a very brief but brilliant career on Wall Street. So yeah, Paul. Paul, do you sell outright options? Now there is a a lottery ticket type of play or S and G type of play is possible, and and I don't want to suck you too much into this gambling mentality. But let's say you're having a really really good day. You could maybe fritter away fifty or a hundred bucks and maybe pick up 50 or 100 contracts and something like X, XSP. And that's like, uh, what would a home 100 be? Just for S and Gs, 100 times, let's say 410 equals times, you know, so now you're, now you're <laughs> four, four million dollars for, for a hundred dollar, uh, you know, throwaway trade. But do be careful with that. 
Never had the nuts to sell naked. Well, good for you, Paul, because it's a good way to get into a lot of trouble. Uh, it's a great way, again, to have a brief but brilliant career. I would never throw anybody under the bus because I've had bad experiences there, too. But there was someone whose claim to fame was they made all this money and, and, and she was of YouTube fame. But the rest of the story was she blew up. She went from nothing to managing like 80 million or 100 million dollars and then she round tripped it all and i think they were looking for her <laughs> so i'm not laughing at the situation it's like good for her but it's it's a it'll work until it don't and that's why i said whenever as i'm looking into what these other people claim to be doing whenever they say they're they're doing these outright selling of these options naked i uh i immediately turn the video off and you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not holding myself to, out to be an options guru, but anything other than a one-day trade, I see no reason to use these options. So I, I saw one video where they were, they were explaining that, oh well, if you're doing this, you're, you're much better off getting the longer dated option because it's not going to change a whole lot, and you know, it depends on the strategy or whatever you're doing. But what I'm doing, I'm trying to capture, capture a quick, fast move, and not spend a lot of money doing it. Okay. And I I do think if I could say one positive that I'm fairly sure about is I do think you can use them as a substitution for index trading and possibly not lose as much as you were trading outright. One of you guys texted me a couple of days ago and I think you lost $200 on one side, like an SQQQ and then $200 in TQQQ. Well, you, you probably could have set up a position in the queues to where you could have spent maybe less money than that and had the same position because you're only probably trading, if you're losing that much, I'm, I'm guessing you're only trading like 100 shares of both. Well, you could go in and buy one or two contracts, puts or calls, whatever, and, and probably have a little bit less risk. Because that's one thing I'm working on is moving away from my index trading and then using the options for that instead, now that they're zero DTE. So again, like I said, possible, like early in the day when they're more expensive, maybe go a little in the money if you want an outright position. Let's say you've got a VIX signal and the market is, is severely overbought and you've got a VIX sell signal and the VIX is severely stretched to the downside and all of a sudden the market begins to implode. And you feel like you want to put a position on, then maybe look in the money to the end of money options and get that position on. And you still would be risking less than you would trading the outright. Of course, there's going to be some premium in there, but that's what you pay for putting up a few hundred dollars instead of a few thousand dollars. So it might be worth it. Again, there's possible late day rev, rev, um, leverage. These things go on sale. Somebody used an analogy of fruit once. They weren't talking about options, but maybe it would, maybe it kind of makes that sense. Sense is that there's a there's this liquidation because the fruit goes bad at the end of the day. It's going to expire, <laughs> you know. So there is a possible S and G type of trading. Don't do it in E minis or anything that's that's settled for the underlying where you could get exercise. But maybe in something like XSP, go in and take a look and that might be like a race to finish option if you see the market let's say the market just severely overbought and then begins to kind of tank towards the close then you might be able to go in and, and take one of these type of trades but do not bet the form and make sure you really you know when you before you click in look at how much you're actually spending on that option okay so take a deep breath and then click in before you actually buy by the way when you buy options always use a limit order okay it's okay to pick. I don't have a problem paying the ask a lot of times if I want in. Um, sometimes for S and Gs, I'll put a stupid bid in and then get the option, which is then, then it's kind of like, oh shit! It's like they gave it to me. It's like, ooh, that's not good because it means that uh, they were trying to unload it. But uh, always use a limit order. Can you practice on the sim account? I bet you could. Um, I could. I could pull up a sim account and see but i would imagine you could and, and paul that's a great idea i'm so glad you brought that up 
So what Paul's saying is put your account in simulation mode and then go in and experiment with this and see see how it really works. And that would be kind of fun to go in and, um, you know, it's probably the map is not exactly the territory, but it would give you a feel. And you might be able to go in it and do something. Yeah, so Paul says, how clean are sim trades? Good point, you know, and, and so you're trading something like options, which is not super liquid. The sim traders, I'd be, I, I'd be careful. I would say the map is not the territory, but I know some of you, and I'm not going to name anyone, but I know some of you, as soon as you hear about something, you rush out and do it. And I know maybe I'm guilty of that behavior too, but I have been trading options for on and off for, for many, many, many years. But don't rush out. If you're inclined to do it and you've never traded options ever, then yeah, try to do it through a SIM account. But just remember that you might not be getting exact exact trades. Years ago, I they, there's somebody who thought they had the Holy Grail, and uh, they had we were doing simulations and stuff. But come to find out, kind of digressing a bit. But there, the data uh, part of the system was based on the moving averages. If the moving average turned up, it was a buy. But the the only way the moving average would turn up, you'd had you had the you had to, you needed tomorrow's prices. So. The map was not the territory is the point of that story was, boy, the system looked great. Literally on paper, we were started studying the charts on paper. It looked fantastic. But if the price was here and the price was here and this price was off the screen, the moving average was doing this to catch to the price. And so you get a buy signal on this day here based on that day's data. So long story, endless. yeah, be careful with the sim stuff. But yeah, by all means, give it a shot. You know how clean are they? I don't know. They're they're probably you probably got a real bid and ask. You know, so that's I think that would that would work. And maybe maybe hit the ask with your um with your uh, simulation or order. Jeff says it all. I always try stupid first, and if it doesn't fill, I go for a reasonable limit. Yeah, I like that. Um, I tend to be a little bit more. I want in or I want out. So I tend to hit the bid or the ask. But yeah, by all means, I, I always and sometimes sometimes I find myself uh, the only problem with, with doing that, Jeff, is sometimes I find myself uh, splitting hairs, uh, it's tripping over the nickels while going for the dollar. So so I'm trying to like it's it's seven nine, and I'm trying to get the option at at eight uh, zero eight, right? And then all of a sudden it's uh, it's eight ten, and then I'm trying to get it at at eight, you know, and then it's like 10, 11, and it just, but sometimes it's a weird thing. It's like when you put it in a S and G order, that's kind of low and you get it. It's like, Oh crap, <laughs> I got it. And maybe that means the market is not that excited or whatever. And on the other hand, if you're trying to put an S and G order, the market could get away from you. So yeah, you gotta be careful. Tendency to chase it until you miss it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, seven, then you're eight, then you're nine, then you're 10. It just keeps creeping up. And I don't know if I'm paranoid or whatever, but it sure seems like they they like, aha, this guy is coming after this. I, it seems like an after hour trading. If I if I leave something on, I need to unload it. And if I don't go under that ask, but or if I don't get close to the ask, I find that it's kind of like uh, you know, let's say it's 50, 50, 50 and a half. Okay. So so uh I'm trying to unload it like at 50.45 and then all of a sudden it's like the the ass drops to 50.45 which might be my order but then it seems like then it drops to 50.4 and then i go 50.35 and before you know it i'm out of point you know after i was trading so you got to be careful with that you'd be surprised how often it works in your favor oh okay well I'll, i'm going to try more often then okay see what happens because a lot of times you might have somebody who wants to get out now and, and i think that's what's happening late in the day is that i think people are trying to unload these options and get them off their books and sometimes you can take their inventory um like i said earlier a few times i think you can take your loss up front i, I like that aspect of trading if you wrap your head around the fact that okay i'm going to spend 100 bucks on this option and that money is just gone and then seek to recoup that money through two x orders and then the management of the position, as opposed to, well, I'm just going to risk, risk five points in the S and P's, and you know, or or on this breakout, I like this breakout and whatever. I'm just going to risk five points, comes back in, I'm out. Well, all of a sudden, it's it goes up and it goes right back down. You're you're out five points. You're like, oh crap, a better exit. 
then you're out seven points, then you're out 10 points, and then it gets away from you really fast. These options do get away from you, but so what? If you're not, if you're trading out of the money and they go to zero, who cares, okay? And once they become mostly worthless, I don't even bother trying to, to get out of them. So you can't take your loss up front. Uh, as I've been saying, with a slightly out of the money option, you could put in an IPT for 2X of your position for a free roll, and sometimes noise alone pays for your position. So for instance, let's say an option is five points out the money, it's trading at 50 cents, and then the market rallies four points. The option's still worthless at expiration, but that option might jump from 50 to 100, or 50 to one, okay? And then you're able to take off half your positions and now, and now you got a free position. So free rolling is a secret to all of this trading. Okay, I always thought it might have just been somebody putting in a market order just when my stupid limit was the next bid. Yeah, it might be. So maybe you get lucky, okay? So the, so Jeff's saying he just goes in and puts in a kind of a crazy bid on these things, and more often than not, he gets them. And then every now and then I find myself, like I said, getting the option, like, oh, crap, what did I buy? <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, I, I have no problem with that. The only problem is, is when that, um, let's come up with a word for it. Let's call it ass creep. That doesn't sound nice, does it? But you could you could end up with ass creep where you keep you keep um you keep trying to get it and then the ass keeps going up. <laughs> yes, uh yes, Dr. Johnson. I seem to have some ass creep happening here. So again, uh two time, two time. So again, you two time the option premium, whatever you pay for half and that's the way one way i think you could possibly get some free positions now i'll tell you this in, in my limited experience experience with these with these things and here's you know let me just digress for one second so before these options i had 52 chances a year to to implement some kind of strategy here now i have 250 or 252 depends on how it all counts out number of days trading to implement some sort of strategy here. So there's going to be a temptation to do them every day. I need to figure out when to sit on my hands. And if you're not careful, before you know it, you end up with a bunch of positions and they all expire out of the money. And the point I also wanted to make here is I've had a few cases where I've had some out of the money options and I didn't pay a lot for them, so I didn't bother flipping out half at a double. And I'll be gosh darn, they were worthless. And then I'll be gosh darn if they like doubled. And then I ended up not making anything on them, not even scratching out, not even paying for my position. So unless I'm just putting up a tiny bit of money, I, I do try to make sure I put in that limit order because you never know on noise alone when it's going to get hit. So here we go. So let's say it's you buy 435 options in e-minis, okay? And let's say you pay $2 for them. Well, if the market rallies up, let's say four, almost five points to where it's almost in the money. Now, this is hypothetical, obviously, but I've seen it happen a couple times in my position so far. That option might double in value and then you could exit half of it and then you got a free ride or free roll. Now, we... we had this conversation in Facebook and uh, Turk had some interesting points. I spent a lot of time looking at and trading ODT options, zero DTE options. I have numerous thoughts, much like yesterday trading. It can catch, if you can catch a whole of trend day, the leverage could be really rewarding. Amen. If it's choppy, you get beat up. Yes. Yes. And you'll get chewed up before you know it. You're buying puts, you're buying calls. And then none of them are worth a damn thing. So I don't want to make it sound like this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I think it's a very dangerous thing, but I think if you tread lightly and be careful and catch a trend day, it can really, really pay off. The premium at the start of the day is large. As, as a result, a $1 move in your direction on an at-the-money spy a queue only gets you 40 cents, okay? So yeah, your delta is like way off in these things okay as the day goes on they erode premium and your percent return goes way down now as you noted the last hour things get fun getting back to that option you know and again i haven't traded them enough to to 
to really know how they work, but I did find myself coming in saying, you know what, I could I could test this strategy out with just a little bit of money and I only have to trade the last 15 minutes of the day. Well, of course, I watch these options all day long and I'll start buying them early in the morning. And just what Turk said, it's like, damn, these things were worth a lot of money early on and or even like 50 cents options. Okay, these are 50 cents. And then before you know it, even if the market doesn't really move one way or the other, they're worth like 40, or they're worth like uh, 20 cents or 30 cents or something. It's like they almost immediately evaporate. So he's right. Out of the money options are low cost, in the money options have as little as 10 cent premium. Yeah, that's one thing that I find, I, I hate to say this, but I think these things are mispriced right now, okay? Now, you could get into a lot of trouble and you can lose money. I had a really bad day a few days ago trying to get cute with all this stuff, but I do think they're not fully pricing in the potential movements yet. And, and I think that they're going to get more efficient as people start discovering these things. But that lures you in a bigger leverage position than you might be wise taken. Yeah, so what he's saying is the premiums do come off quite a bit as they get into money, in the money. So you can use them as a substitution for stock or substitution for e-minis. But your your outlay is getting bigger and bigger. So if you're if you're going 10 points into money, you're now putting up uh what's that, five hundred dollars. Okay, that option is gonna probably be six or seven hundred dollars, as opposed to maybe a out of the money option where you might only be paying a hundred bucks for it. So yeah, I hear you on that. As to buying after 3 p.m. Eastern, some brokers refuse it, some per minute. Okay, my experience has been XSP, you can buy after 3 Eastern or 3 Central my time, or four, yeah, uh, 2 Central my time, 3, three Eastern. The E-minis, I did experiments today and it wouldn't let me after 3.45 Eastern, 2.45 my time, okay? But I did buy XSPs just to an experiment, mostly for you guys, I use it as an excuse, but I bought them like uh, 45 seconds going into the close and I wanted to see how it was gonna settle out and just with a small position to see what happened. I just one contract. I have not figured out a decent strategy, trading rules for zero DTE. Yeah, neither have I. <laughs> But you know the 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 sometimes the best strategy. Everything I've talked about with the intraday trading, I, uh, I I sort of do with these zero DTEs. For instance, I'll take a look at the um, percent change for the day. Okay, so let's say the S and P 500 based on the range, and I can give you the, the formula for this, but basically I'm just looking at high minus low and the ATR from yesterday looking back nine days or 10 days, so I can compare how much the market is moving. And I try not to get too excited until I have at least a 50% move, because if a market's gonna make a huge wide range bar, it's gonna make a 50% range bar first. I should try some trades where I'm willing to lose all or 50% of the price because they can be volatile as heck. Yeah, I, you know, um, it, it sometimes, as soon as you get through putting them on, you've already lost 75%. So I think they're, you gotta be really, really careful. I have a lot of homework to do before I understand all of this. Yeah, we all do, Jeff. <laughs> they get tricky, you know? Um, it would be fun if they'd put them on some big stocks like Tesla, and some other stocks like that too. Uh, I think it'd be fun to get leveraged up late in the day on something. Seems like zero DTE might be a good and cheap way to play ogres. They are a one kind of trade, any one day kind of trade anyway. Yeah, good point, Jeff. Uh, we haven't had one just yet, but boy, I tell you, if the market had had really, really, really big, huge gap lower, it'd be interesting to see what those options look like, and maybe especially if the market fakes out, goes down first, and then begins to come back up. Now, one one side note there is I, I did get into a little trouble. You have to kind of anticipate a market with options. By the time it gets going in one direction, the options get too expensive. 
So you, you have to anticipate a little bit more than you normally would. And remember, we're long volatility, so we need that volatility to move. Okay, I might not have time to get to the money management tonight, so let's let's do the 10% update, and we'll I'll come back to money management next week. I didn't realize we'd spend so much time on the options, but that's great. I want to spend more and more time on this and, and see if there's something there. So I grabbed this spreadsheet earlier today before the rally, and we did go long again on the T, uh, on the TFM 10% system. And the only thing I'm doing here is I've, I've got, my daughters have some leftover funds, some mutual funds. Don't tell them because I'll spend it <laughs> from college somehow. And um, in order to stop me from trading zero DTE options and all this other crazy stuff I do, because I might get a little too emotional with their stuff, or as emotional with their stuff as I do with my stuff, uh, I'm just doing bigger, broader stroke bigger picture type of things. So I did put them in on this signal on 427. So I am following this somewhat mechanical because I'm often asked, do I do anything mechanical like this long term? And I'd say yes. And oh, I did buy, I think I bought like 100 Qs for S and Gs, just the outright Qs. I forgot about that. So yeah, I've got that in one account too, just so I could track it. And I did show the Q spreadsheet a couple of weeks ago. Looks like it shows promise in the Qs too, even as it is. Anyway, the whole idea of the system, as I've said, ad nauseum, is to avoid these diaper change moments, the 43% loss here, go back to the depression, 80, 90% loss. Uh, if you were trading something like the, yes, the NASDAQ, it'd have been a 70% loss in 2000. You can see the two big bear markets, uh, 2000, and the next one, which was uh, 2007, 2008, you would have lost, this is after you exit, okay? So after, if you just buy and hold, held, you'd have lost 44% more of your money. In this case, over half of your money. So this is what happens after you get out of the market. So this number, this right here doesn't make sense because um, we just got into this position. But like here, right here, the last slide we had, you would have avoided an 18% diaper change. And I think it was a little higher than that. But it's uh, it, it's nice being out in the market when the market tanks about 20 or 30%, believe me. And just a couple things real quick. It's in the market a lot of times, but it did out of 94 years, 30 years, it was out of the market. So about 31% of the time, it's out of the market. So the good news is if there's any dividends and, and you're going to be in the, you're going to be in every bull market, okay? And you're more likely to have dividends in the bull market. So you'll get 70% of the dividends. And by the time you factor it all in, even being out 30 years, you're going to probably capture the crux of all those dividends during that time. So here was the last sell signal, and it sold off fairly hard. We did have a sell signal here, and then we had what I call a, a fake signal here. Fake only because I thought this was touching my moving average, so I didn't see it as a signal. And this was not my intent anyway. I didn't intend to buy on weakness. It just so happened that that's how it worked out in that particular case. So I didn't actually take that signal. But even if you did, as, as you saw in the spreadsheet, it was not a huge loss. And then the subsequent loss here was, was at least 18% you would have avoided. And the, the percentage losses are down here, just to give you a kind of a a feel for how much you avoid by being out of the market. So right here, we had two days of Landry light above the 50 simple moving average. And we also closed above the buy line, which is 10% less the 50 week closing high, okay? And that is a buy market on close type of signal. So we are long basis this system based on this close from a few weeks back. And if you go to my website, you could see the, the, the signal. Okay, I'm gonna, I swear I'll get to those questions next week on the money management. I've got all the slides ready to go, but we're running a little late based on the, the zero DTE, which is fine. I, I don't mind spending a lot of time on that because I'm learning from you guys. I'm learning as we go. I'm not, again, I'm not holding myself as an, out, as an options expert. I spent 14 years in a hedge fund, or part of the hedge fund, I should say, consulting a hedge fund that traded options, but I never actually did the options trading myself, but I got a feel for how it works and 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 what could go wrong, <laughs> believe me. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube and you like the video, then like the video. If you don't like it, 
go have no fun somewhere else. <laughs> and uh, if you want to become a gold member of DaveLanner.com, love to have you. I've got trading courses. Uh, somebody just was asking me about um, like a, a $1,500 course I have. That's all part of the member system. You unlock those those goodies with time. And then also, and he just unlocked his, also we have the Facebook group, which is the best thing I've ever done. I love you guys. I get to, if you don't see me in there, I'm lurking, believe me, but I'm, I'm in there every day. And feel free to hit me up with questions there and I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, let's hop into the markets. Let me just go through crypto real quick and then we'll we'll hop into um, the stocks and take a look at those guys. Okay, Sam says, one side benefit of trading zero DTE options, you can earn one get out of OK Boomer card for free. Get out of OK, like a get out of jail card for free. You kind of lost me on that, but I, I you said you can get like um, free positions. <laughs> you know, and that's, I don't know exactly what you're saying, Sam, but but to my surprise, like I've had some options, put them on, and it's like they were like um, 0.34 or whatever, 34 cents. And by the time I put them on, I turn around, come back, they're like at seven cents. It's like, oh crap. But I left them on, and then I get a zing later, like, what the hell is that? It's like they went to 64 cents, and my limit order got hit. So yeah, sometimes you get that that uh, get out of jail free card. I don't know if you, that's what you're talking about, but but yeah, it's possible to get those free positions, so to speak, set up. Okay, let's um, let's do this. Let's uh, let's go to trading view and let's take a look at some crypto real quick. Now, crypto has, especially Bitcoin, has been having this uh, this positive correlation to stocks. That's okay, Sam. I th I think I know where you're headed with that. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I didn't mean to beat you up. No, I know what you're saying. You could you could get sometimes they let you off the hook, which is uh which is pretty cool. Now you can't build a strategy on that, but it would be nice, right? If they let you off the hook. Okay, so let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin was a bit of a bummer because it took off. And then it came back in and then it went all the way back down to the bottom of this range. So I would consider this a failed breakout, but now it's kind of going right back up. And what's kind of cool is Bitcoin is having a bit of a decoupling from stocks. And that's kind of how I wish it would have traded, you know, from day one, like, hey, stocks aren't doing so great, but Bitcoin's going up. So let's buy Bitcoin. Well, Turns out it began to act like a similar asset class to stocks. And you could actually, and I've done it before, you could actually plot one over the other. Just put a colon between the two on stock charts or even on the ACP platform it works. And you can see if stocks are outperforming Bitcoin or Bitcoin's outperforming stocks. Maybe there's a system somewhere and something like that. I don't know. Maybe in one case you want to buy Bitcoin, in another case you want to sell stocks or vice versa, depending on the um, how you design the system. But there is something there. I'd like to see them decouple, and they they have decoupled here and there every now and then, so that'd be kind of cool. So Bitcoin, I wouldn't rush out and buy Bitcoin, but it's certainly back to the plus column again, and we certainly have a couple days. Uh, if today holds, obviously the new day just started based on this uh, trading view. I wish, does anybody know how to set the trading view to midnight for new day? Because I get a new day like right about the time I'm doing these presentations, and it throws off my numbers for the relative strength sorting. But anyway. There's Bitcoin. Bitcoin's improving as of late. Ethereum is not quite as impressive as Bitcoin. And then if we take a look at Ethereum versus Bitcoin, you can see it has underperformed Bitcoin. So right now, if you had to pick Ethereum or Bitcoin, you want to be long Bitcoin. And I've been kind of going after these um, shiz coins quite a bit. So here's the ones that I'm long. This one hit the IPT. I think this one also hit the IPT. I just showed a little while ago, as did this one. So all three of these need to be green. I don't know if I'm still in that map. Oh, by the way, I got to ask a question about stops. Yeah, I don't have an answer for you just yet on, on that. So 
like I said, and it's not going to work tonight because it's too late. Well, this one's already taken off. Sometimes you can just look at the strongest ones when they're all going, okay? And lately, it hasn't been that way. So lately, I've just been trading back to the core methodology like I just showed you. When they have long tails like this, the volume is usually too thin, so be careful when that happens. And nothing's really jumping out at me tonight. You guys want to look at any pairs? I'm going to go ahead and shift gears and hop over to the market, the stock market that is. Okay, just randomly, I was looking at this earlier, obviously. Here's the XSP 30-minute chart. So you can see it was kind of a, I wouldn't say a route, but it did, it gapped higher or lapped higher, and it did kind of move higher all day. So this is like a, this is like a, a dream if you're if you're trading the options. Now, I didn't make a shit ton today on it. Um, I think I was a little skittish because last because yesterday I lost money doing it. But today would have been the day because I mean you don't know it's the end of the day, obviously. But once it's about 50% of its range and it keeps going up, that's when you need to think, okay, maybe we have a route day starting here. SP 500, uh, yesterday we were down below the 30 EMA and the day before. But today we pop right back up, 2% move. So this is exciting that this market came back as strong as it did and erased a couple of days of, of ugly trading. I'm not going to get too excited until unless we get past these little peaks in here. But certainly it's doing okay and it has been working its way higher. And, and this is where sometimes having a mechanical system in place like the TFM 10% system can help you to, to know that, hey, the market is improving even though it doesn't look fantastic at face value. NASDAQ looks pretty good. Now keep in mind one or two days, and I don't want to start chasing my own tail because let's say tomorrow this thing drops two or 3%, I'm going to be like, well, it's not looking good guys. And But then as long as we're near these new highs and above these bow tie moving averages, above the 50 simple moving average, I think we're okay. If we drop back below, then you might want to pull your horns back in a little bit. There's GBTC. GBTC, nice little rally today. So far, rallying out of this pullback. This is uh, equivalent, somewhat equivalent to uh, Bitcoin. Anybody know the premium, the uh, discount on this? It had a like a 40 something percent discount not that long ago. I don't think it's improved that much. But if if these guys can turn big if if they turn this into an ETF, then that premium should come off. Uh, or I'd say at least 30 or 35 percent of it. Russell 2000, as I've been saying, at nauseam, it's a complex head and shoulders bottom, if you want to call it that. Maybe on a weekly chart, it might not be so complex. Uh, complex meaning multiple heads and multiple shoulders. Yeah, still same kind of action there. And I think it's bottoming out, but I would not buy it. I wouldn't touch it because it might have to come down one more time and test these lows to finish the bottom. So I'm not trying to time off the Russell just yet. I sure would like to see it. Kick it into gear. Oh, by the way, if you want to ask, start asking about individual stocks, feel free to do so now. Energies are a bit of a bummer. They broke down out the range and they pushed into it, but they couldn't get out of it. So I would leave them alone. Draw you a sideways arrow there. Metals and mining, also a bit of a bummer. They were doing pretty good in here and then they started selling off. They tried to rally and now they're kind of rolling back over again. I wouldn't get too excited about foods because it can be a defensive area, but foods are banging out new highs, as you can see. The banks really didn't come unglued, and I didn't get a whole lot of shorts, or I didn't get any shorts that I actually took, because it just kept going up and up and up and up, and it looks like they roll back over. I, I wouldn't rush out and buy them, but I'd be a little leery of shorting them in, unless they start going back down again, unless you have a really good setup, <laughs> or unless the guy that screams on TV says buy banks. <laughs> Financials look a little better than the banks, obviously. A decent day today, still below the moving averages, still, I don't know, kind of not fantastic looking longer term just yet. Drugs got whacked yesterday, but did kind of stabilize today. So, so far, they're just pulling back. They dropped back into this prior base here. I become concerned about that. Biotech's kind of all over the place. So, nothing to really do here just yet. And we've got a little Landry light below the 30. So, ideally, I'd like to see that get closed and like to see it rally. All right, Sam, take care. Good to see you, man. Appreciate you uh, staying this long. Thank you. Health Services has been doing pretty good. It's got a lot of overhead to deal with, but it has been doing pretty good. It looks like it's trying to rally out of a pullback. The fence was just breaking out about a week ago, and it came right back in. This is the frustrating thing about this market. It's like it 
it seems to be improving, but then it comes back in. So if it is a bear market, if it is a, well, when the Freudian slip, if it is a bull market, it's a really stealthy one. Now, some new leadership is developing, so pay attention. Material construction, home builders beginning to look pretty good. I wouldn't hold this longer term, but like something like nail, you could see high level type of cup and handle type of pattern. If it takes out these recent highs in here, it looks like it's off to the races. So that's kind of interesting if you're looking to catch a short term move there. What else is happening? Let's take a look at the semis. Semis a bit of a bummer, okay? You have a bow tie to the downside now. I wouldn't rush out and short them, but I wouldn't be too excited about rushing out and buying them. It, it, they did find a little support here, but for now they're rolling over. So uh, Rick is asking about like SMH. So let me just pull that up since we talk about semis. I wouldn't buy or sell the semiconductors right now. I, I like to see the semis rally to confirm what's when the market's rallying. I like to see them confirm. So I would wait. I would wait for a rally. I mean, if anything, if you had to, they almost look like a short at this juncture. But and, and I hate to say that because I always want to be. I like to be a bull on semis because when, when semis are doing well, everything's doing well. Gold's not quite as impressive as silver. It looks okay. It's pulled back a little bit in here. Silver's a little bit stronger than gold. Silver could actually use a little bit more pullback, but if it pulls back too far, it's back below this base in here. But so far, silver's been a little bit stronger. And uh, a lot of stocks have a lot of overhead supply in silver and gold too. So I haven't really found anything to go after just yet. We had one, I think it was SVM on our watch list for a few days, but it just pulled back too far. Okay, ALDX, yeah, just feel, keep the stock picks coming. Yeah, ALDX looks good. This has been on my um, my list for quite a while. I think I pulled it off the Landry list tonight last minute because first of all, good job. Almost a high five here or damn close to it because you've got Nice little trend. You've got accelerated trend. You got a pullback to the 30 EMA. Looks pretty damn good. I had it in the Landry list. And then when I looked at it again, right before I published, it's got a mountain of overhead supply. Even though it's a long ways away, a year or so away, or two years away, markets sometimes have long memories. So shorter term, it looks fantastic. Great pick. Sam, high five. Longer term, it's got some issues. Maybe I'm being too much of a perfectionist. I don't know. But that's a that's a pretty good looking stock. It's not perfect. It's a little wide and loose here and there, but it's certainly improved recently. But unfortunately, again, lots of overhead supply. So I pass on that one. Who's that? Rick. I might have said Sam. F. -F. Sam just had to leave. F. I. F. R. X. Uh, this one is not too exciting for me. I don't like stocks that that have one or two big huge days, and that's the whole trend. And then they tend to chop around. I call those bottle rockets. It seems like they go straight up. I mean, so what, what kind of move is that? Just kind of ridiculous 700% uh, move or 800% move, whatever the case may be. And then it retraced a lot of it. So I would leave that one alone. Okay, any more? Quite a bunch tonight. I know we talk about stocks all day in Facebook. All right, going once, going twice. Well, obviously, I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Hang in there. Hopefully we'll get some, I know you said hope, but hopefully we'll get some trending markets soon and get out of this chop that we've been fighting through, which has been difficult, obviously, as a trend follower. Believe me, I feel your pain. I saw my equity today, or at least a change in equity, and it was um, it was not good uh, based on this. Uh, we got whacked on one today pretty bad. So it happens, but longer term, you position yourself for those longer term trades, which I wanted to get into earlier. We just didn't have enough time tonight, and we'll pick it up next week. But with the money management, position yourself for longer term winners is the place to be. All right, uh, let me go ahead and wrap things up. Everybody have a fantastic night. If you're not part of the group, uh, Facebook group, everybody have a great weekend. Everybody else, I'll see you tomorrow and Facebook. Thanks a lot. May the trend be with you.